Estimating e to the 1.45 using a Taylor polynomial about x equals 2, what is the least degree of the polynomial that assures an error smaller than 0.001? In general, if you see a situation like this, where we're talking about approximating a function with the Taylor polynomial centered about some value, and we want to know, well, how many terms do we need? What degree do we need to bound the error? That's a pretty good clue that we're going to be using the Lagrange error bound, or Taylor's remainder theorem. And just as a reminder of that, this is a review of Taylor's remainder theorem. And it tells us that the absolute value of the remainder for the nth degree Taylor polynomial, it's going to be less than this business right over here. Now, n is the degree of our polynomial that we're in question, so that's the n. The x is the x value at which we are calculating that error. In this case, it's going to be this 1.45. And c is where our Taylor polynomial is centered. But what about our m? Well, our m is an upper bound on the absolute value of the n plus 1th derivative of our function. And that might seem like a mouthful, but when we actually work through the details of this example, it'll make it a little bit more concrete. So for this particular thing, we're trying to estimate, we're trying to estimate e to the x. So I could write f of x, let me write this this way. So f of x is equal to e to the x. And we're trying to estimate f of 1.45. And let's just to get, get the bound here, to figure out what m is, let's just remind ourselves that, well, the first derivative of this is going to be e to the x. The second derivative is going to be e to the x. Go, the nth derivative is going to be e to the x. The n plus 1th derivative is going to be e to the x. So the n plus 1th derivative of f is going to be, is going to be e to the x, which is convenient. These types of problems are very, very hard if it's difficult to bound the n plus 1th derivative. Well, this we know, we know that e to the x, we know that e to the x, and I could even say the absolute value of this, but this is going to be positive, is going to be less than or equal to, well, let's say this is going to be less than or equal to e squared for 0 is less than x is less than or equal to 2. e to the x isn't bounded over the entire, uh, for, for, for over its entire domain. If x goes to infinity, e to the x will also go to infinity. But here, I've set up an interval. I've set up an interval that contains the x we care about. Remember, the x we care about is 1.45. And it also contains where our function is centered. Our function is centered at 2. So we know we're bounded by e squared. So we can say, we can use e squared as our m. We can use e squared as our m. We were able to establish this bound. And so doing that, we can now go straight to Lagrange error bound. We can say, we can say that the remainder of our nth degree Taylor polynomial, we want to solve for n. We want to figure out what n gives us the appropriate bound evaluated at 1.45, when x is 1.45 is going to be less than or equal to the absolute value, our m is e squared, e squared over, over n plus 1 factorial times 1.45, that's our x that we care about, that's where we're calculating the error, we're trying to bound the error, minus where we're centered, minus 2 to the n plus 1th power. Now 1.45 minus 2, that is negative 0.55, so let me just write that. So this is, this is negative 0.55 to the n plus 1th power. And we want to figure out for what n is the, all of this business, is all of this business going to be less than 0.001? Well, let's do a little bit of algebraic manipulation here. This term is positive, this is going to be positive. This right over here, or this part of it, it's not, it's not an independent term, but this, the e to squared is going to be positive, n plus 1 factorial is going to be positive. The negative 0.55 to some power, that's going to flip between being positive or negative. But since we're taking the absolute value, we could write it this way. We could write e squared, e squared, since we're taking the absolute value, times 0.55 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial has to be less than, has to be less than 0.001. Or, since we want to solve for one, let's, since we want to solve for n, let's divide both sides by e squared. So we could write, we could write, let's find the n where 0.55 
to the n plus 1 power over n plus 1 factorial is less than is less than 0.001 over over e squared now to to play with this we're going to have to use a calculator remember we're just we're going from this point we're just going to try uh, larger and larger ends until we get an n that makes this true and we find when we want to find the smallest possible n that makes this true but let's get out our calculator so that we can actually so that we can actually do this so first i'm just going to figure out what is 1000th divided by e squared so make sure it's cleared out so let's take e squared i'm going to take its reciprocal and then i'm going to multiply that times a thousandth so times 0 0.001 is equal to so it's it's about so i'll say so it's three zeros this is a ten thousandth and then three five so it's three zeros so i'll say one three six so this needs to be this needs to be less than 0 0.123 and then i'll say one Three, six. If I can find an n that is less than this, then I'm in then I am in good shape. Actually, let me say this: less than one three five. I want to be less than that value. Then I can be then I will be in good shape. This is a little bit more than one three five. But if I can find an n where that is less than this, then I'm in good shape. So let me write this: zero point five five to the n plus one over n plus one factorial. So let's try out some ends, and I'm gonna have to get my calculator out. So let's see, did I do that right? Yeah, 0, 0, 0, 1, 3, 5. If we get something below this, then we're in good shape because this is even less than that. All right, so let's do it. Let's see what this is equal to when, I don't know, when n is equal to 2. I could start at n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3. Uh, but the more n, the further, if n equals 2 is good enough, then I might try n equals 1. But if n equals 2 isn't good enough, then I'm going to go to n equals 3 or n equals 4. So let's start with, actually, let's just start with n equals 3. So if n equals 3, it's going to be 0 0.55 to the fourth power divided by 4 factorial. So let's do that. Let's do that. So 0 0.55 to the fourth power is equal to that divided by 4 factorial. So divided by 4 factorial is 24. So that's nowhere near low enough. So let's try n equals 4. If n equals 4, then it's going to be this to the fifth power divided by 5 factorial. So 0 0.55 to the fifth power is equal to, and then divided by 5 factorial is, 5 factorial is 120. Divided by 120 is equal to that. We're almost there with n equals 4. I'm guessing that n equals 5 will do the trick. So for n equals 5, so let's clear this out. So for n equals 5, we're going to raise to the 6th power and divide by 6 factorial. And so let's just remind ourselves what 6 factorial is, 720. I could have actually done that in my head, but anyway. All right, so let's see. We're going to go 0 0.55 to the, remember our n is 5, so we're going to raise to the 6th power, to the 6th power, and then we're going to divide by 720. Divided by 720 is equal to, and this number for sure is less than this number right over here. We got four zeros before this 3 after the decimal. Here we only have 3. So when n equals 5, it got us sufficiently low enough. This remainder is going to be sufficiently low. It's going to be less than this value right over here. So what is the least degree of the polynomial that, ass that assures an error smaller than 1,000th? The answer is 5. Our n, if n is 5, we're definitely going to be under this.